Hi, welcome to the Carla Knits podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, sometimes crocheting, but always all of the yarny goodness that I love. Uh, today is Thursday, February 25th, 24th, 24th, and this is episode 44. Uh, thank you to those of you who are returning viewers, and if you are new, thank you so much for stopping by to check out this channel. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry, and most recently my Etsy shop as CB Crafty Girl, and links for all of those places uh, will be found in the description box down below. I think I said that right. <laughs> as well as patterns I talk about, yarns I talk about, all of that information um, is linked down below. Uh, we do have a podcast group for Carla Knits on Ravelry. And currently we have a Love Your Stash Make Along 2022 going on. So it goes for the entire length of this year. And the idea is to use your stash. So anything in your stash prior to the beginning of this year. Um, so there is a lot of chatter going on. There are a lot of beautiful finished objects already. Uh, so it goes for the length of the year and I will be drawing quarterly prizes. So following um, the end of March, my podcast in April, I will draw a winner from each of the chatter threads and the finished object threads. Uh, currently this week, it seems like there's a lot of chatter um, about dishcloths in, in that chatter thread. Um, so lots of us like to make dishcloths, but um, sometimes uh, they don't always turn out square like we like them to, uh, like grandma's favorite dishcloth pattern. You know, there's a few pattern out there, kind of the classic square dishcloth or the classic dishcloth that has been around for a number of years. Um, but there's been some discussion about how to make it more square. And somebody in the in the group said it turns out more like a rhombus shape, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> I guess I appreciated that because I have a son who teaches math. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to get that exact perfect square shape. So I had shared a pattern on on there that Amy from Noble Character Crafts talked about. Um, and so I know some people are trying that one. If you have any tips for making those dishcloths a little more perfectly squared instead of that final point on that, that final edge, um, please, please share in the comments down below. I know, there, or in the Ravelry group, I know lots of people would be interested. So if you have any tips for making it more square looking, or a pattern that really does that for you rather than that kind of wonky corner, <laughs> please, um, you know, feel free to share that. That would be, that would be great. So thanks to all of you who are participating. It's lots of fun, such beautiful projects already. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see people using their stash. And it sounds like a lot of you are really happy that you're using your stash this year. So I know I am. So that's, that's great. So the whole year, there's lots of time to participate. Uh, a, a big thank you to those of you who um, sent such lovely, encouraging messages of support about my newest um, Etsy shop endeavor. You know, I truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you and your kindness. Um, you know, several of you did shop from my shop and that, that just means the world to me. So thank you very, very much. Um, you, you just made my heart so happy. <laughs> so that was very kind of you. And there's still plenty in the shop if you're, if you're curious and, uh, or if you want to see what's there. And, um, I'm, I'm sewing some new things this week, so hopefully in another week or so there will be some new things in the shop too. So thank you again to all of you. All right. Yay, the biggest finished object today. I'm so happy. <laughs> what I am wearing and my finished object, one of my finished objects for today. Yay, it's finally finished. You guys are all probably cheering too. Yay, we don't have to hear about it anymore. <laughs> This is my Bean and Olive Sweater by Andrea Mowry. I started it on January 1st and finished it this week. Um, it did feel like it was on the needles for a long time, but I just cranked on that 
second sleeve this week and got it done. Um, so I don't know if I can kind of stand up. I really like the length of it. The one thing I will say is that the sleeves are slightly long and I was really scared when I wet blocked it. You know, I, I soak it in a tub with some wool soak and then I squish it out with a towel and I lay it flat on some blocking mats. Um, but when I took it out of the water and started towel, towel drying, Try it. The sleeves looked just gigantic. I thought they were going to go to the floor. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't, but they looked so long. Um, but they are a little on the long side. But gosh, when I'm sitting here, they don't they don't feel like it. I guess when I stand up, they're a little more they're a little long, but not bad at all. Um, I think the yarn did soften in here. It does just look like a design feature. That's where the the increases are in the pattern. Um, so I am very happy with how this turned out. Um, I think it is a really well-fitting sweater for what I like. Uh, the yarns I used one more time are Lion Brand uh, Superwash Merino in a gray color. And then the pretty contrasting color is Dragon Horde Yarns uh, in the Lyric colorway. And it is a DK weight sweater. Um, while I did like the yarn as far, the gray yarn, as far as the softness, and I do love the feel of it, um, and I enjoyed knitting with it, um, the yarn, um, the yarn has little, a bunch of little fibers, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to pause this a minute and try to show right. you. So I brought out my yarn, if you can see... There's lots of little plies to this and they, they aren't the most, they're not very tightly wound. So can you, can you see that? So lots of little plies. So I'm not, I wasn't super crazy about that. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about there. Yeah, all these little plies. And in these skeins of yarn, um, there were also quite a few knots, you know, where they had to join probably new yarns, um, which I know it's commercial yarn, but there shouldn't be several in one ball of yarn. So, you know, when I got to the ribbing, I was, I had to cut, you know, yarn during my ribbing on my, the hem because of knots in the, in the yarn. And that was just frustrating. And I know another one happened, I think, when I was in the color work here, the gray, I came upon a, a knot and so I had to cut and you know, that's not fun joining yarn <laughs> when you're in the middle of color work, especially small circumference color work. So I wasn't crazy about that. Um, but I really do like how the sweater feels. It's a really nice, nice sweater. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, it continues to, to wear fairly well. Um, I don't know if I will use this yarn again for a sweater. Um, I would have to think about that, but it is it is a, an affordable option. Uh, so I did appreciate that. Um, and I'm very happy with, with my finished object. And this is also on my Make 9 for 2022. So if you're not familiar, the Make 9... Um, is something that Amy of Noble Character Crafts is hosting where you pick eight, excuse me, eight, where you pick nine projects that maybe you'd like to focus on this year. Um, and then just, it's just a fun thing to participate in to see if you make those things. Um, so I believe this is the first, this is the first one off my Make Nine for my personal Make Nine. Um, I have made several off of my gift Make Nine. So happy to have one crossed off of uh, my personal Make Nine. So I think that is all I want to say about the sweater. The color work was really fun. It's not, it's not hard. I think it could be a good first color work sweater if you wanted to try. Uh, you wouldn't even have to do it on the sleeves. You could just omit that and just, just try the yoke. There is a kid's version of it too. So um, that would certainly be a good one to start with. If you have a youngster in your life that you could knit this for, that would be a good way to practice color work too. All right. 
on to a couple other finished objects. So last week I shared when I was redoing my yarn, all of the yarn and moving it into this, my yarn room now, <laughs> that I came across a couple treasures. And one was a sweater that was completely knitted, but it had not been ends woven in or blocked. So I did, oops, there's just no great way to show <laughs> <laughs> to show this I yeah I will wear it on the podcast sometime but here it is and it's got a cute detail on the sides to this uh garter garter panel on each side under the arms so this pattern is called practically by Kelly Herdrick, uh, and I made it in uh, Jojo Land's Splatter Dash. I don't remember the color, and I was looking on Ravelry at, at the yarns last night, and I could not exactly pick pick which color it is. I wasn't sure. This is a worsted weight yarn. Um, I am very happy with how this turned out. It's it's a little smaller than what I'd like, but I made this many years ago i again i'm guessing probably 2015 um gosh maybe even 2014 when it, yeah it was it was early on and so i i might have been a little bit smaller then a little bit so um it, it i mean it's an open it's an open cardigan i mean that's what it's designed for but i guess i would like it a little more close fitting but it is an open cardigan the yarn is wonderful it is very very soft um so I'm very happy to have this done. I think this would be a fun first sweater. I know I would say this is probably one of my first successful first sweaters now looking back after I found it. Um, yeah, this was really nice. This would also be a really nice uh, gift knit for somebody if you'd like you know, to knit a sweater for someone in your life. I think it's really easy to throw on and wear. So really, really happy with that. Uh, but I don't know if it's really a finished object because it was really almost done, but I wanted to share it in its entirety. But my real other finished object is this dishcloth. Uh, so this, hopefully you can see those little hearts. This is Home is Best, best Dishcloth. This is by uh, the Kitchen Sink Shop. And I shared that she is um, having a pattern of the month this year based on her favorite books. And so this is based on uh, a Laura Ingalls Wilder book. She says specifically these happy golden years where Laura returns home after being away to teach in a neighboring town. And I think she says something like, um, home is the nicest word there is. So I think that's, that's really, really a sweet sentiment. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, the yarn I used for this uh, was gifted to me by my friend Joanne at Christmas time. Uh, she gifted us all uh, a skein of, of yarn and a pattern. This is a Euro, Euro Baby Babe soft cotton worsted. Uh, it's in the pink dolly colorway, kind of perfect. And it's an acrylic cotton blend. So I'm kind of wondering how it will work as a dishcloth uh, since it is a blend, but it does have that cotton in there. So I think it'll be, it'll be just fine. And I like, I like how it, how it turned out. So the dishcloth uh, will be available on Ravelry, um, but you can get it, I think later in the month. I think it is there now, but uh, you can go to the kitchen sink, her Instagram profile, and she has a newsletter sign up where you will be emailed uh, her pattern towards the beginning of the month. So I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, March's um, book and washcloth pattern is going to be. And so links for, for that will be in the description box down below too, if you're interested in making that dishcloth. All right, it's getting a little warm in here, <laughs> which I just think this bedroom is really warm. We've, we've come to discover that this room is really, really warm uh, and it is very cold outside. It's in the single digits right now. Um, we've had a cold snap 
like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of very, very frigid temperatures. So it's nice to be inside wearing, wearing a wool sweater. My first whip, so works in progress now, is my Charisma sock. That's what I'm calling it because that's what the yarn is called. Um, or it could just be happy, happy colored sock because it has such happy colors. So this is where I was last week. So I have made a couple inches and I have done the heel. So if you've been a long time viewer, this, this looks different. I have not done a German short row heel in quite some time. And I just thought, well, I'm going to just throw that in and see, see what I think of that. So I have done, I have done them in the past. Um, and Jeff has a pair of socks, one pair of socks with the German short row heel. And he says it's his best fitting sock. I mean, he told me that this year. So I was like, hmm, maybe I need to revisit that German short row, short row heel. So the short row heel that I use is from a knitting expat pattern. That's Mina Phillips, who has a number of sock patterns out there. So if you're new to sock knitting, um, she's got you know, some really nice, easy textured patterns uh, that would be great for, you know, just following a plain vanilla sock, you know, just after that vanilla sock, if you want a little something more, you could check out some of her earlier patterns, but this is her German short row heel. And again, the yarn is called Charisma. It's by Lollipop Yarns. And that's that's the progress I made. So again, the main focus this week really was the bean and olive getting that that done. So now, now to work, really get some work on my other projects. Uh, my second work in progress is this shawl. Let's see, this is a little hard. Oops, poking myself. Uh, so this is uh, Stash Dance by Susan Ashcroft, I believe. And so I've gotten a couple inches done on this. Uh, the yarn is, let's see, Yarn B Chloe in the Soft Petals colorway. And it's such a soft, soft yarn to work with. Uh, when I sat down to work on this, this shawl this week, it was just, it was so relaxing. I guess after after the bean and olive, I was in such a, I don't know if I was in such a hurry, but I was just so anxious to get it done, you know, just pressing towards the end. And then I sat down to to work on this shawl this week, and it was just kind of like, oh, this it just felt so nice and relaxing. So I think combination of the colors, the texture, the pattern, the yarn, the, the way it feels, it's just been a really nice, nice pattern to work on. So that's the progress on that i have one more i haven't put any work on that second outlander sock i haven't i haven't cast it on i need i need to do that but i think at the rate i'm going i probably will finish maybe finish this one first before i cast on the second one but i really should just i should just do it shouldn't i i should just it's just getting through that that cuff, that ribbing. I just need to do that. <laughs> but my final work in progress that I'm going to share today is a new cast on. Uh, this is called Blooming Bandana Cowl. And this is a Premier Yarns design. And this is a self-patterning yarn. And I will plop. I will put a picture in of what the the pattern is or what the the cowl looks like but I was really drawn to this self patterning yarn and it looks like little flowers obviously uh, blooming uh, so I just was really curious about about this so I wanted to try uh, so this this is something that I did purchase uh, within the last week I found it at at Walmart in Lincoln. We didn't have it here in our town, uh, but I did. I was in the Lincoln Walmart and found it. So um, I started this, let's see, two nights ago, and I started on the recommended needle size, which was a US 11, which when, when I think about 
my socks, you know, the tinier needles, that US 11 was really, really big. And I started, I started working it up and I actually had quite, quite a bit done and I was doing it at nighttime. And then the next morning, so yesterday morning, I looked at it and the stitches just seemed so, um, so big and just kind of, they weren't, they weren't sloppy, but they were more open. And I just didn't like, I just didn't like the stitches. They weren't as tidy as I would have liked them. So I actually uh, took that out, recast on using a US 10, and I'm much happier with the fabric that I'm getting now. And I think it will be just fine. Uh, it looks like it will fit better around the neck to begin with. The other one was just so, so loose and crazy. So I think, I think this will be, this will be better. Um, and I'm really excited just to try this yarn. It's a really soft yarn. It is 100% acrylic. It is bulky weight. I will say, even with the US 10s, these are bigger needles really than I prefer working with. So I really do need to consider that when working on projects that I, I don't really, really work, enjoy working with those bigger yarns and those big needles. Um, they definitely give my hands a lot of fatigue and sometimes sore, sore fingers. Um, and I would like to just sit down and crank this out, crank this out, but we'll see. It just, I have to take breaks doing, <laughs> doing this so it doesn't, doesn't hurt too much. Um, so those are my three active works in progress. I did, if you were here last week, I did share a cross stitch that I am working on, a knitting cross stitch. Um, and I did put some work into that this week, um, but not a whole lot. But when I get some more work into it, I will share it again on the podcast. Just a couple of things about some upcoming knitting that I would like to do. So these, these two projects, and I will put them in, I will insert pictures here. Uh, so these projects are both on my make nine list, my personal make nine list. One is on my personal make nine, one is on the gift make nine. So my, my first one is a hat and it's called the Snow Fern Hat by Kalura Hudson. And I just loved the look of this hat. Um, I think it is just beautiful, the cable work in here. Um, so it calls for a Aran weight or heavy worsted weight yarn. So I think I do have a pretty, I think, Oh, is it Lion Brand? No, or it's Patton's. I have a Patton's wool, I think, in a worsted that tends to be a heavier, heavier weight, and I think I'm going to do it in a cream color. Uh, so I, I would like to get started on this this week. Again, let's see the needle size. What does it say? Uh, <laughs> well, here we go again. Uh, US eight for the brim and US ten for the body. So. We will see that that may have to wait just because I'm working on that that cowl. I don't know. That might be too much on the hands. But the other one certainly is a smaller project. Uh, U.S. needle sizes are much smaller. Uh, this is called Oh Gnome You Didn't. So there's been a lot of gnomes recently on Instagram, and they are just so cute. Uh, this pattern is by Sarah Shira. And she is Imagined Landscapes. Uh, and she has just a series of these most darling little gnomes. So this is one that I picked uh, to do. And I, I got a little kit from Etsy last year, late last year, um, for this specific pattern. So um, it is somewhere somewhere on my shelf back there. Um, but I, I will probably show that when I start working it up. So those are the two, and it is a, a fingering weight pattern. Um, so have any of you made, made this gnome or are any of you on that gnome kick making these sweet little gnomes? Um, yeah, I'm anxious to see, to see how this, how he knits up. So I think that is, oh, that is not all. That is not all for today. I did want to share something else. I won a giveaway. So I watched, I watched, 
I think I talked about this last week that I could watch knitting podcasts all day, every day. <laughs> but I watched the Pearled in Texas podcast with uh, three ladies. It's Elizabeth. Carrie and Melissa. Hi, ladies, if you're watching. And I won their giveaway. They had a giveaway in December. They hit 400 subscribers. And I won. I won. I was so excited. So this beautiful skein. So this is another skein in, in my stash this year, but I didn't buy it. Uh, this is Zorn Junction Yarn Company. And this is Zebra. It's called Zorn Zebra Sock, but it is not, it does not have any nylon in it. So it is 437 yards. Uh, I will not make socks with this because I would, I would want nylon with it, but it's going to make some, a fun accessory of some kind. So my question to you guys is, have you used a zebra yarn yet? Or do you have a one skein fingering weight pattern that you think this would work up nice in? Um, I am thinking the Changing Staircases Shawl by Tristan Molina of Dragon Horn Yarn. Uh, I have knit that shawl two times. I really enjoyed that pattern. Uh, so I'm thinking that, um, but I'd be curious if any of you have good ideas for zebra yarn. and. I don't know this this kind of there's so many beautiful colors in here but it reads a little autumnal to me so I may wait to to knit this up till later in the year I want to find the perfect pattern but this also came with this um, Glamberry Cedar Mint handmade soap I'm not taking it out of the package it's it's very strong smelling so yeah so there's a bar of soap and then this beautiful, it looks like handmade sachet with lavender. Isn't that pretty? The little stitching on there. I just think embroidery stitching is so pretty. And look at, look at the backing fabric and how perfect is that with this skein of yarn? I just think that is so perfect. So thank you so much, ladies, uh, for the, the lovely prize. That was, that was so nice. And what a happy piece of mail to receive this week. Uh, just a little bit of chatter. Uh, last weekend I was really busy with church. I played for three church services. Uh, this week I've had, um, work a couple days at the college and, um, I've done a lot of sewing. I've done some baking. I've made, um, we had some bananas that needed to be used. So I made monkey muffins, which, you know, are peanut butter, chocolate chip banana um, mini muffins. Um, it was so cute. Two days ago, I had just just baked them in the afternoon and Jenna walked in the front door. She's like, I smell peanut butter. What did you make? <laughs> so <laughs> she was really excited. I haven't made them in a while. I used to make them a lot when my kids were young, but I am going to see my son Ryan who lives in Kearney tomorrow. That's why I'm podcasting a day early this week. <clears throat> And I always like to bring some kind of baked something, you know, home home baked goodie to him. So uh, I have, I didn't let Jenny have all of them, but I, I did make a, a double batch. So there's a lot of mini muffins. So I have a freezer bag full of them for Ryan to take to him. And he, he has two roommates, so I'm sure they will, they will all appreciate that. Uh, so baking, I made um, homemade turkey soup yesterday because it's been really cold. So it seemed a good good soup weather to do that. Uh, I've been doing sewing, um, sewing, knitting, cross stitching. So um, that's what I have been keeping busy with. I'd love to hear what you are working on this week. Uh, if you'd like to join in our uh, make along on Ravelry. That would be great. Um, hope, hope you are all doing well and um, have a great week with your makings. Uh, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.